Minister Varga, Hungary has about 500 corona cases so far. That's about 5% of Austria's number. Why does Viktor Orban need a state of emergency that is so much farer reaching than any other European country? I think in Europe we are now facing a phenomenon which every country is facing. So it's not up to statistical methods, uh, which uh, implies the necessity of certain uh, measures. Uh, all countries actually following uh, the same pattern where they uh, introduce measures which are needed to uh, save uh, lives and health and also to tackle the economic consequences of the virus. But in no other European country you will find a state of emergency without a time frame. I think in Europe we are a, a community of uh, constitutional values and uh, each and every constitutional tradition is different. And we also made some uh, discovery uh, concerning the measures and uh, the different uh, constitutional uh, status of, of the situation in each country. And a similar uh, situation is uh, there in several countries, either in a form of a, a decree or special law in action. So I, I wouldn't uh, deem the Hungarian version any extraordinary uh, to what is happening in the other parts of, of this continent. Well, sorry, Minister, but that is just not true. There is no other European country which has a state of emergency without a time frame. Uh, the emergency law in France, uh, for example, has a time frame of two months, that in the UK or in uh, Italy has six months. Uh, your state of emergency has no time limit at all. Uh, your question first concerned whether there is in other countries state of emergency and uh, when it comes to the modalities how this uh, actually state of danger in Hungary rather to use this terminology uh, the Hungarian assembly actually has more power than generally uh, in these situations because the national assembly is uh, in the position to revoke at any time uh, this authorization uh, for the government to uh, prolong the effect of those measures which are needed uh, in case of this uh, danger situation and the parliament is uh, there and at the end of the, the dangerous situation will uh, overrule the whole act and uh, thus all the effectiveness of the decrees which will be enacted uh, in order to tackle the, the consequences and in order to prevent the virus. In the National Assembly, uh, Viktor Orban's party Fidesz has a two-thirds majority and the party does nothing against the will of the prime minister as you most perfectly know. Uh, but this is a political question. It was decided by the electorate uh, two years ago, almost two years ago. Uh, so electoral uh, voters, uh, they have the right every four years to, to decide on this political question. It's not uh, the government's uh, fault to have a party behind the government, which uh, won two-thirds, uh, actually in a third ex uh, consecutive uh, general election. So if your question uh, refers to the political situation, uh, this is the case in Hungary, uh, but this is different uh, uh, from, uh, from other type of questions. This is a political question. It was decided by the, the citizens of Hungary. Uh, but the opposition parties have suggested to put a time limit uh, into the law, as in every other country in Europe, three months or six months or the end of the year. Uh, but you did not accept it. Why is there no time limit in the law? Uh, I reiterate to myself, uh, the time limit is uh, even uh, more strong or even stronger in this uh, version of uh, the Hungarian constitutional uh, model because the Hungarian National Assembly it can revoke this at any time. Do you find this in, in other uh, countries' measures? But I would uh, refrain from uh, making comparison between different uh, uh, time framing and uh, different details of other member states' uh, uh, solutions because uh, you need to know the whole context of each constitutional tradition in each country. So to have a, a real peer review, we needed more time, which is, I think, uh, in excess of this uh, television uh, emission now. The law says uh, the emergency law will end uh, when the parliament revokes it, where the uh, party of the prime minister has a two-third majority, or when the crisis ends. But uh, when does the crisis end? When there is no more COVID infection in Hungary, or uh, when the economic consequences of the crisis are digested? Uh, since 2016, there is a migration emergency law in Hungary, and it gets extended and extended uh, without end, even uh, though there is not a single asylum seeker in Hungary. So when will this crisis uh, be ended. 
I think if you pose this question to any other head of government or any other government in Europe, uh, I would be happy to listen to the answers first, because I think primarily objective facts will decide on when the virus is over. And I do hope that the sooner uh, this will be, the better uh, over, because uh, we need to get this uh, through uh, all together. So it will be a very well-known objective fact when the crisis is going to be over. But this is a, an extra prerogative uh, in the hands of the Hungarian National Assembly, they legally actually set uh, outside of effect all these measures when the crisis is factually over, which is, I think, if you have an answer from the German Chancellor to this, when the crisis will be over, and every, if someone can say it right now when it will be stated to be over, I will be happy to answer this question too. But that might be the reason why all other countries have a term limit in their emergency laws. But there is a stronger term limit when the National Assembly is there to revoke at any time, even tomorrow they could revoke it, and ex extra uh, guarantees are there in the law, which are uh, not so often uh, quoted, unfortunately, in, in the media emissions, uh, because uh, we input uh, more flexible rules for the functioning of the constitutional court, uh, so if, in case they would be uh, prohibited from uh, being convened, they can also uh, have a voting or negotiating any kind of uh, application uh, from a distance, uh, from the distance, uh, this is an extra guarantee for the checks and balances. And what's more, the Hungarian government shall regularly report to the National Assembly about any measures taken. And this has also actually happened so far uh, about those measures which concern uh, the uh, health emergency measures or the, the closing down of universities, etc., which are actually similar measures happening in every country. And I have to emphasize that the Hungarian government uh, will rely on the proper functioning uh, in the future as well on the National Assembly. So if you check the summer schedule on the website of the Hungarian National Assembly, there is an uninterrupted functioning foreseen. So the ordinary legislation will be functioning. So I would like to categorically reject any kind of misinterpretation of this law as if the Hungarian National Assembly wouldn't uh, uh, function in the future. This is a, a special situation where those measures which need a prompt action from the side of the government, actually those prompt actions are required by the opposition, by the citizens and by uh, every Hungarian uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, this is where the government has this kind of prompt flexibility to act, but only within the limits of the scope which are there to fight the COVID virus, to protect citizens' lives and health, uh, protect the national economy, but only in connection, of, uh, in connection with, the, with the COVID-19 virus. And also proportionality and necessity test must be also met. And this shall be checked by the Hungarian National Constitutional Court, which is there also to function even in a flexible way uh, in case they could not be convened in their building. So I would also recommend for every everyone in Europe to check this very short two-page law and read it uh, letter by letter and then have uh, your own interpretation, not only read uh, the media uh, broadcast because they are really misleading and it's very damaging. And as Prime Minister Orban wrote in his letter to, to the General Secretary of the Council of Europe that if you cannot help us, please uh, do not hinder us from working. We all have to face now this challenge. This is life and health question. And this is, this is about protecting our citizens. This is about protecting Europe. And we shouldn't uh, damage each other's uh, efforts in fighting this, this, this virus. But Minister Wagner, if you're right, and this state of emergency is totally harmless, uh, why would the UN the Council of Europe or the OSCE young unanimously uh, denounce it. They, are they all misinformed or is this a huge conspiracy against Hungary? You know, uh, Hungary has always been high on the agenda. I, my, I, my whole career is about fighting back these unfounded statements. It is like a, a fashion in Europe. If someone is uh, criticizing Hungary uh, because of uh, the liberal mainstream, which is, which is very, very uh, dominant in Western media, if a politician today does not enter into this mainstream communication, uh, somehow it will be negative. Uh, uh, rejected uh, in Europe. So this is actually uh, coming from the same source all the time, not uh, checking the facts. It's a uh it is the, I, th I don't think that in Europe we are facing in the media a freedom of uh, speech because uh, only liberal views are there. And I think here the question is political. 
Uh, there is a two-thirds majority government uh, won by uh, free election uh, uh, for the third time in a consecutive way. And I think this is the, the whole problem, and that Hungary has a conservative view in many uh, crucial questions. We are true Europeans, however, we are critical in some points, and this is, I think, uh, the uh, broader picture here. But there would be many people who would say uh, that... Uh the two-thirds majority of the government in parliament has to do with the very limited press freedom uh, in Hungary. And the most criticized measure uh, that uh, you put into law yesterday uh, is this against so-called fake news on the crisis. Everybody who spreads false information which could interfere with the protection of the public or alarm a large number of people faces up to five years in prison. No developed democracy knows a law like that. Uh, first, I have to reject your uh, statement in your question if there is a uh, suppression on the, on the press. Uh, believe me, the government critical voices, uh, especially in the online platforms, is above 80 percent. So I just invite you to come to live in Hungary and speak our language and just check it every morning. So I highly reject this kind of statement. When it comes to the new criminal act, uh, it's not uh, completely new because uh, uh, the fear mongering uh, is a long standing uh, criminal uh, uh, act in the criminal code, which has a very uh, well known and very well elaborated uh, case law in the Hungarian criminal law. Uh, the only new thing and novelty in this uh, second paragraph, which we introduced uh, to the criminal code, concerns. Uh, the situation when the country is an, in an extraordinary uh, legal order where everybody needs to be uh, needs to have a higher discipline but uh, it's a very fine-tuned and very sophisticated drafted uh, crime where there must be a intentionally uh, untrue statement uh, which is uh, capable of uh, affecting uh, the uh, effectiveness of the defense efforts, uh, which is a common interest, and it must be made uh, in front of a large public. So these are all consecutive uh, uh, conditions, and similar uh, legal cases also do exist uh, in other countries with a well-known case law. So uh, I do believe it is applicable equally to all uh, uh, citizens uh, uh, being active in Hungary. So it's, it doesn't make any kind of differentiations as uh, concerning the, uh, the persons who can commit it. Uh, if a journalist would write, for example, the government's policy regarding the corona crisis is wrong and endangers Hungary, you could very easily declare that as fake news alarming the public and put him into jail. I am so happy for this question because you frame it perfectly well that this does not fall be, uh, uh, under this uh, crime because any kind of opinion, criticism, however harsh they might be towards the government, do not qualify. What, uh, with all due respect, uh, an uh, untrue, with all due untrue respect untrue false Mr. Bug, I, I have to interrupt you here because uh, yes. you yourself said yesterday uh, it was, I quote, very damaging fake news that the emergency, that the emergency law is intended to neutralize the parliament. This is exactly uh, where the law yes. uh, puts a penalty of up no, to five no. years. You're, you're practically news... eliminating press freedom here. Uh, no, please do not imply anything with your question, and I do ask you now to transmit this into your uh, in in your broadcast. Uh, literally, what I'm I'm saying now, because. Uh, uh, maybe we are talking now in English, but uh, fake news uh, uh, falls under that category in my interpretation, which is an untrue statement. It's not an opinion. It's an untrue statement. So if we use fake news in other sentences, that's a completely different issue. Now we are talking about the criminal act. And that's what I'm trying to explain here. The criminal code has very serious uh, conditions, what does and does not qualify as an untrue statement. And it must be intentional, which is also very, very important, and it must be capable of affecting the defensive efforts. And let me also here add that a, a, a very huge number of Hungarian citizens do support this kind of amendment, not only those who are in favor of the government's general policy, but in general the Hungarian citizens do welcome the, the West majority of the Hungarian citizens. So please try to also look at uh, things from this angle and, to, and not only implying uh, 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 some kind of stimulations which are not there in this law at all. This is equally applicable to any one of us. Uh, to sum it up, will this state of emergency still be in force one, ne one year from now? State of danger, sorry. Will the state of danger state be still in force one year from now? It's a different uh, terminology. No, it will be in force as long as uh, there is the state of danger. We do hope it is much uh, shorter than that. And again, 
the National Assembly is there to revoke this at any time. And if you can also make this statement uh, concerning other countries, what would this uh, mean in practice? That they would be also in this situation of danger or uh, whatever it is called in other uh, constitutional systems, but they all will imply the same uh, relation, uh, rational rules which are there to protect citizens and to enable the government to be active, to be effective and to protect all those who must be protected during such a crisis. We are repeating ourselves uh, because any other country has a term limit on its emergency laws. But uh, with the state of emergency in place, no elections can be held. In 2022 parliamentary elections are due in Hungary. What happens if the crisis is not declared over by then? Will there still be parliamentary elections? I am. Uh, your question is highly hypothetical, but yes. let me be clear. Uh, the national fundamental law, the Hungarian fundamental law, is governing when do we have general elections. A law, even a cardinal law, cannot overrule this. So in 2022, we are going to have general elections, and I do hope that there won't be any interruption of a virus anymore in all Europe uh, for those elections to be held. But it is not governed by this uh, uh, Corona uh, Virus Act, because it is not there to uh, regulate this. It is uh, stated by the fundamental law that every four years we have general elections, which shall be held in April or in May following the uh, first uh, or the previous uh, general elections. It is untouchable. What the law says is actually that some interim uh, elections, which are actually uh, foreseen, must be suspended because you know people cannot be put to danger to collect uh, these recommendation cards and this is also a general phenomenon in Europe that all these uh, interaction between citizens right now to collect the recommendation uh, uh, papers etc when it comes to an interim election must be uh, waiting uh, until the, the uh, crisis is over. Uh, just remember how harshly was the French election criticized quite recently why they held it. Uh, against uh, uh, some other uh, voices. So uh, the, uh, I'm again reiterating, this law does not touch upon the general elections, not at all. So please also try to uh, dissolve uh, this kind of contradiction in the international media. Minister Varga, thank you so much for your time.